uh, chapter 3, I believe it is. We'll, we'll turn over there tonight. Uh, 2 Thessalonians. And uh, I hate to do this tonight, really, because there's people here that I, I love you, but uh, um, it's sad to have to do this, to just tell you that you're not welcome here no more. But uh, that's what we're going to do here by the Scripture. 2 Thessalonians chapter number 3. And uh, look at verse number 6. Uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse number 6. Look here what he said. Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly, and not after the tradition which he received of us. For ye yourselves know how ye ought to follow us, for we behave not ourselves disorderly among you. He said there's some people you need to stay away from there in verse 6. And I want to preach about that family tonight. Uh, tonight, uh, I want to preach about the Tate family. The Tate family. Is there anybody in here tonight whose last name is Tate? T-A-T-E. I wouldn't raise my hand either if I was you. <laughs> Is there anybody in here tonight? I'll, I'll go down the list. We're going back down. Anybody in here tonight with the last name of Martin? Right now. Uh, the, there they are, sitting right over there. The Tate family. The Tate family. The Bible said that there's some people... There's some people that you'd be better off just stay away from. And there's some people you'd be better off uh, not to have. Now, now, you don't ever hear me say that because, you know, I want everybody to go to church and everybody ought to go to church. But if they're going to be like this family, uh, you, you, uh, you don't want them. There's an old man who's the head of this family, old grandpa. And then there's some of the boys and he's got daughters and they've got aunts and uncles and they just about ruin a lot of churches that I've been to. I've been to churches that the preacher can't do nothing because this family stops him. I've been to churches where they can't spend no money because this one family in that church stops everything that the church wants to do to go forward. I've been to churches tonight where every time the Lord wants to do something, this family, this one man, always jumps up and says... We can't or I don't won't think we should or the Lord this or that and, and does not let the church move forward and get the job done that God's given them to do. Now I want to call this family the Tate family tonight and the old, the old granddaddy of this family, he's an old mean old daddy rabbit kind of hateful old guy, his old uncle Speck. His name is Speck Tate. He's Speck Tate's. You know what Speck does? Old Spectate is somebody who just, he all he does is just sits back and watches and criticizes everything that anybody else is trying to do. Do you know what I mean? Say amen. amen. You know, you got a lot of people in churches tonight. They're an expert on how everybody ought to do everything, and they don't do nothing. They're an expert on this, that. They're an expert on preaching. They ain't never preached a sermon. They're an expert on uh, teaching and never taught a lesson. They're an expert on singing and never sung a song. They're an expert on church organization. They ain't never organized nothing. They're an expert on how the church ought to do and don't ever do nothing. I, I thought about, we was talking about me and Brother Wayne. I uh, was talking about Brother Jack Hiles on the way down here. And a lot of preachers had a lot of critical things to say about Jack Hiles and, uh, and everything. They said, uh, someone down there said, well, we just don't like the way you're doing it. And old Brother Hiles said, well, I like the way we're doing it better than the way you're not doing it. Amen? That's what old spectate does. He's just a spectator. He's just a spectator. Beware of hanging around a fellow like that. Because a fellow like that's always set. You know, there's always some old grouchy, old hateful old daddy. And most churches tonight, we don't have him much around here, but I tell you, he's an onlooker. Uh, he's just a fan. He just uh, he don't he won't do nothing. He just wants to find fault with anybody that is doing anything. He don't ever do anything, but he just uh, uh, he'll, he'll after the service he'll come and say, "Well, what do you think about this?" 
And what do you think about what they're doing now? And I don't necessarily agree with I think the preacher, I think the deacon, I think he's spectator. And I'm going to tell you something tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Old Speck, bless his heart, he ain't never done nothing for God. He ain't never uh, brought a soul to church. He ain't never uh, organized nothing. He's never accomplished nothing. He just watches and criticizes how everybody else does anything. You don't need that. We don't need somebody who just always uh, just griping and grumbling. Uh, listen, brother, you know what we need to do? We need the people that lead by example. We need some people who will say, hey, I'm doing something. Follow me. You want you to do something. We need some grandpas that will set their grandkids, see them go to the altar and pray. We need some mamas and daddies that will let their kids see them sing in the choir and maybe you'll sing in the, they'll sing in the choir. And the reason kids won't do nothing is parents won't do nothing. The reason parents won't do nothing, my old papa wouldn't do nothing. And I'm going to tell you something, brother. We don't need to be spectators. We need to be doers. Amen. The Bible said don't just be hearers of the Word but doers of the Word of God. Uh, you know, when you do something, you inspire other people to do something. I stayed in a motel this week. The they, they, church was real nice to me. A small church, but they're very good to me. Uh, put me up in a nice Jameson Inn, and uh, it was real clean and everything. And, uh, and I, I was due one like that. Uh, and, uh, and boy, they was real nice to me and took good care of me. And the pastor took me out to eat. And I got out and run every day. And the motel's on a hill, like that right there. And uh, uh, this, uh, it was like halfway up the hill. And there was a steakhouse down here and a car lot down there. And right below that, there was a Kmart and a shopping center. And there's an Aldi's. And there's an Aldi's grocery store. Well, I was trying to decide where I was going to run. So I got out, uh, let's see, I was out there Thursday night, Friday morning. Friday morning, I, I went and, and run. And I take my watch so I can... I, I know how far I run by, by looking at my watch because I know how long it takes me. And I run two miles. And, uh, you know, I started out and I thought, well, I can get this hard part over with first or I can save the hard part to last. When you're on a hill, you start out running up the hill. And, boy, it's hard. And then when you're coming down the hill, you just sort of rest. And I thought, well, I think I'll go ahead and do that first, run up the hill and, and then back down and then down the hill and then back up. And I'll, get, I'll have the hard part first and last. So I run and I figured out how, too far, uh, how far two miles was. The next day I run again. And uh, the next day there's this fellow out there, him and his wife, the girlfriend, whatever they was, and uh, they, he was standing out there and he was, he was watching me. And I run, I run down, the, down there to Aldi's and run around their parking lot a bunch of times, run around the building, run, and I come back up the hill and everything. And about 30 minutes later, I went and got dressed. The pastor's supposed to take me out to eat. And that guy had got his tennis shoes on and he was out there running. He ran right down there. I watched him. He ran right down the same way I do. And I thought, you know what? That's just the people, if they see somebody else doing something, then they want to do it. And it's the same way in church. He run down there. He run all around the Aldi's parking lot like I did. I guess his wife probably said, you need to get out there and do that. And probably, that's probably what happened. And he got out there. But then I, then I saw him uh, about 10 minutes later. I saw him. He was walking back like this. He didn't make it. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, I'm just thinking, you know what? You know what? You know what kids need to see? Uh, they, they need to hear a sermon, but they need to see a sermon. They need to see a sermon. They need to see mom and daddy who live right. They need to see a mom and daddy who will do right. They need to see a preacher. They need to see a singer. They need to see a Sunday school teacher who will do right. Hey, people, I'm telling you tonight, brother, we, we got enough spectators. Uh, we need some participators. Old spectate, bless his heart, he ain't worth a dime. All he wants to do is sit and criticize and talk. I, I, I've seen people give out tracts. I've heard preachers preach. We ought to give out tracts. I stopped last night. Preach myself under conviction. I preach last night. We ought to witness and witness, and I always do. By the help of the Lord, I always do. But I really got uh, fired up last night. I got fired up last night in that revival, and I come home and I stop. You know that sheet store, y'all that have been up there with us? We stopped there at Sheets on the way back, and buddy, that place is wild. On Friday and Saturday night, son, you could stop. You could be a missionary. Sit right there and not spend a dime. A big old convenience store, and there's people ever size, shape, and color comes in there, buddy. Wow, people. I got out of my car, and brother, I grabbed me a handful of chick tracks, and I said, I'm going witnessing right here tonight. It was about, about 10.30 last night, 11 o'clock, and I said, I'm going witnessing. And I grabbed me them tracks right there, and I looked. 
Right here, these two girls pulled in beside me. I mean, they was wicked. They wicked. They looked like they would not go to Chick Fil A. You know what I mean? And boy, they and they pulled in there, brother. And uh, them these girls pulled in there, and she she had, her hair was about four different colors. And I'm not being critical, but it was black and white hair, and it looked like a skunk. She looked like a skunk. Her hair was black and, and white, and uh, she got out like that. And I said, "Here, ma'am, can I give you something to eat?" She said, "No." And just turned right around. I thought, she don't go to Chick-fil-A. Uh, and, uh, and I said, you know what? I said, Lord have mercy. And there's a boy sitting here beside me. I said, man, that's rough. And I said, here, let me give you something to read here, buddy. He was sitting there with his window open like that. And he didn't have a shirt on and a beer. That was the biggest beer i ever seen in my life. That thing looked like a guy. It was that big. He said, I don't need that. <laughs> I said, yeah, you do too. I said, let me get You need this. He said, no, I got a bunch of them. I believe in God. I said, no, you need this, buddy. He said, no, take it. Somebody needs it. I said, you need this, son. Uh, and he was drunk. I can't stand that smell. And then I looked over there and there's a bunch of Hell's Angels motorcycle gang sitting right at this, this picnic table. And you know, they got a picnic table out there in front of it. And I, and I thought, I don't want to witness them. I, I, and, and I thought, man, I need to. I mean, they had big, they looked like ZZ Top, these guys did. Big old gray beards way down to here. And you know, um, I, don't, I, I don't see why a woman want a man look like that. But anyway, that's the way they, they look. And I, I, I said, no, I need to go witness to them. And I thought, oh boy, I don't know. Them guys liable. To, that, that, that girl sort of hurt my feelings, you know, when she, she just turned uh, you know just turned it down like that. And I thought, man, I don't know. And I said, ah, right, here I go. Lord, help me. So I went over to that table. And there they was all sitting over there. I said, how y'all doing? And they looked at me and said, hey. And I said, uh, man, that's a nice looking bunch of, bunch of Harleys you got there. And uh, I, I thought, well, I'll get on the good thing. They said, thank you. Thank you. I said, boy, them pretty. And uh, they said, thank you. And I said, can I give you, I had a little chick track said, somebody loves me. Give them to a motorcycle game. Them little, they got the little kid in there, you know, don't even have no words in it. And, uh, and I laid it down there and I said, here you go, boys. And y'all, have, here's you something to read. And you know what? Old boy looked like ZZ Top looked up at me. He said, wow, that's good. Let me give you something. He reached in here and pulled out. He had a bag of crosses. He said, we're in the ministry. He said, we go around. I don't know what kind of ministry he is in. Uh, but he pulled in. He pulled in. I built a big old handful of uh, crosses. And I brought them Brother Ray and gave them to him so he can put them around town. And boy, I tell you what, I went on down the road. You know, the devil, the devil will try to keep you. The devil will tell you all kind of things. The devil will tell you you don't need to sing in the choir. They don't need you. The devil will tell you people at church don't like you. The devil will tell you not to witness. There was a devil telling me not to witness it. It was the devil telling me them guys would hit me or cut my throat. Or that that wasn't the Lord telling me that. Hey, you know it wasn't the Lord because it didn't happen. If the Lord would have said it, it would have happened. And I'm going to tell you tonight, it's about time some of you got up off the seat of do nothing and quit being a spectator and said, by the grace of God, I want to do something in church. By the way, let me just go ahead and say this tonight. Don't criticize the church for not doing nothing if you ain't doing nothing. Am I right? Amen. Anything I can't stand, it's people saying, well, it's just summertime. And now, listen, don't talk about the number in Sunday school being low if you don't even come to Sunday school. And don't talk about the number being low if you won't be, if you ain't out visiting, are you listening to me? If you're not out knocking on somebody's door and trying to get somebody to come to church, don't you say one word about low attendance. Not one word. You're a spectator. You're not a participator. You're all spectate. And you need to get right with God. Say amen right there. I think I'm too loud, brother. I say that every service. After I get started, turn it down just a little bit. And I'm going to tell you something tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, you hear me this evening. Oh, speak! Don't be ashamed of himself. Don't complain about the money being low if you ain't giving what you're supposed to. If you ain't putting your tithe in, you ain't got no right saying nothing about the church not getting nothing done. Can I get a witness? Say amen right there. Amen. Don't complain about the spirit being low if you ain't praying and fasting. Well, I just can't feel the spirit. Well, I, I wonder if we I wonder if we totaled up your total prayer time this week, what it might be. Lord, it's getting quiet in here. Amen. 
And you say, well, I've heard people say that. Say, well, I don't feel spirit. You know why you don't feel spirit in your church? And this is for everybody here that's on radio, internet, whatever. Because you gossip all the time and you know everybody's faults. And people's told you so much junk on everybody that you ain't got no confidence in nobody else. And all you do is sit there and look at this one and look at that one and look at the spectator. You ought to come and say, brethren, we are meant to worship and adore the Lord our God. Get your eyes off each other. Don't worry about brother so-and-so, sister so-and-so. Who's doing what? Who ain't doing this? Who is doing that? And do your best for your church and don't be a spectator. Say amen right there. That's right. Amen. Always somebody running their mouth about something. Amen. Old speck. Old speck. I'm telling you something, brother. I heard about a woman said one time, and I'll get to her in a minute. She said, well, if I don't get to Sunday school class that I want, I'll just quit church. I said, well, you have just proved that you don't need to be a Sunday school teacher. If you have that immature attitude... You have just proved you need to be in the nursery, even though you're 40, with a big pacifier about that big. Amen, brother. Amen. I'm telling you tonight, old speck, bless his heart, he ain't worth a dime. You know what? He'll infect you. If you ain't, if you ain't careful, old speck will come out to church and you and speck will go to Sonic and sit there and eat an ice cream and old speck will say, well, I just don't think the spirit moves no more at our church. Well, how long did you pray this week, speck? How much did you fast, speck? How much did you participate, speck? How much money did you put in, old Uncle Speck? <laughs> what if you name it? I'm telling the old spectate, bless his heart, he, he don't do nothing but uh, he, he don't do nothing but just cause a, a trouble and problem all the time. Amen. I'm telling you something, ladies and gentlemen. You hear me tonight, old speck, he's a bad, he's a bad, bad guy. He, he ain't worth a dime, and he don't need to be listened to. He don't need to be followed. He's Uncle Spectate. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight, he's a family that we don't want. But then I want to say secondly this this uh this evening, he's got a brother. And old Speck's got a brother we don't want. And old Speck's got a brother we don't want needing this church. Old Dictate. Old Uncle Dictate, you know him? Uh, he's a dictator. He wants to dictate to everybody what's going on. Now, we don't have much problem with that in here. But you got every, most churches has got one old old daddy rabbit or two that been there a hundred years. That's one thing about having a new church. We don't have to worry about it. Uh, but there's all, usually one. There's usually one. He said, well, I was here when the church started and my papa all gave the land this building was built on. And boy, old dictate, Lord have mercy. He, he's going to say what goes on. It don't matter. He's going to have his way. And if something happens he don't like, he's just going to raise enough cane. You know what? How he's going to cause enough trouble uh, to cause the pastor to get run off and run out of town and everything else. That bunch of old dictate. Reminds me of old Ed McAbee said years ago, and you've heard me, you've heard me give this illustration before. Old brother Ed was preaching revival somewhere off down in the country and uh, off down in Alabama or somewhere. And he said he preached this revival. Big old church. He said about the third night he come down hard on sin. I mean he come down hard on that sin. And when he hit that sin hard, he said something about, and he said this woman just went. As a deacon's wife. He said she swelled up about that big. He said she punched that deacon in the ribs and said, that's it right there. And he knowed he'd kill that revival. He said when that thing was over, she punched that husband. She grabbed him and marched him out of there like that. He was one of these little push button models. Little, I mean, he was so hand packed, he roosted on the end of the bed at night. Uh, you know what I mean? I mean, he just sat there like that until she woke him up. And he didn't, he was one of these that always had to pray about everything. He had to go ask her permission, you know. I mean, she just completely bossed him around. We'll get to her in just a little bit. Uh, y'all just be, be patient here with me tonight. And boy, she said he, she marched him out of there. And buddy, when she got him home, she said, we ain't going back. Back. You ain't going back. She said, I'm going to call everybody I can and try to keep them out of that revival meeting. She said, I'm not going back. You're not going back. Uh, where, and she said, and I'll tell you something else. She said, we are going to run that preacher off for having a man like that come and preach to us. He said, that revival got littler and littler and littler all week. Dead. Kill that thing. Do y'all realize tonight, here tonight, shining light, 
that I would be run out of most churches in this country for just preaching like I am. You know how bad it is in this world tonight? But it's bad out there. You know, one of our ladies told me the other day, she went on vacation, and she told me, she said, Brother Danny, you, we just don't realize what we've got. She said, you get off out there, it's hard to find anywhere where there's any power, where there's any conviction, where there's any tears. I mean, you can find a rock band and a bunch of people swaying and a bunch of 7-Eleven songs, but she said, it's hard to find God out there. And you know what? When that revival was over, the pastor sat down with Brother Ed. He said, he sat down with me. He said, Preacher, I know you've come a long way. And he said, we really want to do something nice for you and everything. But he said, the deacons have deducted $300 from your love offering for that sermon you preached tonight. night. He said, you made that deacon's wife mad. And he said, they're going to probably run me off when, you, when, when this is over for having you in here to preach. And Brother Ed said, praise God, I didn't know I had a sermon worth $300. <laughs> That's what he said. He said, I'd give $300 and get to preach that old hussy again. That's what he said. And, and I'll tell you something, buddy. Listen, I'm telling you, old Dick Tate, they some of them in one of them churches, they won't let nothing go on unless it's their approval. They some people in some churches that think they are so spiritual and that they're a level above everybody else and if one thing goes on they don't like, they'll stir up enough trouble in the church to get it stopped. And I'm going to tell you something, brother. We don't need no dictators around here. I'm not and you sure ain't going to be. Amen? I'm not and you sure ain't going to be. I like Jack Wood said. Old Jack Wood said, he said, it ain't my job to be a dictator. It's my job to keep you from being one. That's right, brother. That's right. Amen. Old dictate. Lord in mercy, he mean as a devil. I'm telling he wants to command. Dictator is somebody who wants to command and give orders without authority. Amen. Like Diotrephes in second third John chapter uh, one and verse nine. It said Diotrephes loveth to have the preeminence among us. There's some people that just love to have the preeminence. I go to a lot of churches and there's certain people in there, they just love to feel like they are the most important people in there. Boy, I would to God that every one of us, we need to all realize we're sinners. We need to realize ain't none of us no better than nobody else. There's none of us in here got a right to look down on anybody else in here. The ground is level at the foot of the cross. And by the way, don't you ever feel like that you're down here and others are up here. Don't you feel like that here tonight. Don't, everybody in here is equal tonight. Don't you ever feel, I don't care if you're a poor little bus kid. I don't care if you drove a Cadillac Longs near that wall here tonight. We're all level. And when we walk in that door here tonight, there ain't nobody no better than nobody else. Somebody might be dressed a little nicer. Somebody might be have a little bit nicer home. But there is nobody in here no better than nobody else. Say amen right there. Amen. He's one of these guys that said, don't do as I do, do as I say to He's one of these guys that said, well, I don't do it, but you ought to do it. He's one of these guys that said, now, I don't never go visiting, and I don't, but you people ought to be out here and get out here and knock on doors. Old dictator. Amen. And then old sister comes in, his sister, and she's mean as a snake. Her name's Aggie. Lord, I can't hardly stand to be around her. Aggie Tate. She's always just stirring up something. She's one-sided. So that's what agitate. Agitate means stir up. It means people to increase dissatisfaction to produce social or political change. Whoa. Did you hear that definition? The definition of agitate is to stir up people as to increase dissatisfaction to produce social or political change. That's worth repeating, brother. That's worth repeating. Agitate is somebody, she goes in and she stirs up people so as to produce dissatisfaction. Lord, how mercy man preach on that all night long. Oh my goodness. I went to a church to preach one night and, I, and, and Aggie and her friends was in the next room. 
And buddy, I'll tell you what, I got down to pray. I, and they was in the room next door, some ladies in the church. I didn't know it. They didn't know I was in there. I got down in there, it was real dark, and I was praying, oh Lord. And I could hear these ladies in the next room. And you ought to have heard them. One of them was saying this. I think it was a nursery. I'm not sure. And she was saying, well, I'll tell you one thing. The next time the pastor says anything to me about it, I'm just going to tell him what I think. And I'm going to tell him and give him a piece of my mind. And she said, I know it. He has no right. And they were talking about their pastor like he is a dog. And I, I was in there trying to pray. And I thought, Lord, there ain't no use in us trying to have no revival here. If that's the attitude these people got toward the pastor. Listen, people. we God ain't, God ain't going to bless a bunch of mess like that. We're supposed to be a family. We're supposed to be a church. If you're here tonight, Angie, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. You ought to get your long tongue on this altar and ask God to forgive you. Listen, Angie's the type that makes rules for everybody else, but yet she can do anything she wants to, and it's all right. You know what I mean? That's all Angie take, bless her heart. She mean as a snake and wears a halo and a garment down to her feet at the church on Sunday, and what makes everybody think she's an angel and sprouting, it's really horns she's sprouting. Uh, but they, she makes everybody think she's sprouting wings. Edgy, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Edgy's one of these people that's, uh, that's against men and has a double standard. Let me see if I can think of how she thinks. She can go around and say, well, I'll tell you one thing. If my husband did that, I'd tell you this or that. And, that. and it's all right for her to talk like that. But if she ever heard a man say, I'll tell you one thing, my wife ain't going to do that. Oh, he's a mean old chauvinist. He's a, now it's all right for her to say, my husband ain't going to do this. My man going to, but if he said my woman, oh, he's awful. You know what I mean? Let's see if I can make it a little plainer for you girls. Angie's one of these, I heard about one the other day. They, 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 they saw some young teenagers, just young teenagers, 15, 16, and Aggie's about 35 or 40, and she looks at this teenage boy and says, wow, isn't he cute? He is so cute, that little boy. He's cute as a dog. I could just pinch him. And, I mean, and she, then she said, I think I'm a cougar. Boy, that little old boy's cute. And that's fine. If her husband looked at a teenage girl and said, wow, She'd say, you sick pervert. That's Aggie. <clears throat> you want me to come back here and preach for a little while? Are y'all listening to me? Let's just get back in here where Aggie might be sitting. See if I can find her sitting in here tonight. Don't you dare bow your head and close your eyes. Aggie has a double standard. She can look at them me little boys and lust after them. But boy, if her husband says something about a girl, he's a sick pervert. That's Aggie. Say you, man, right there. Aggie is one of these that says, uh, well, I like, I like soap. Listen, soap operas does the same thing to a woman as a playboy does to a man. It stirs that emotional desire and lustful desire in a woman. She'd call her husband a pervert if he did something like that. And I'm not saying either one's right, they're both wrong. That's Aggie. You ain't never heard that before. I ain't never said it before. <laughs> Amen. Oh, cougar's all right. It's all right. It's all right for her to say, wow, Matthew McConaughey's hot. Whatever his name is. <laughs> monkey, 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 Matthew monkey head or whatever his name is. But if her husband said, wow, that, oh, you sick, you're nasty, you perverted, sick thing. That's edgy. That's edgy. It's all right for her to watch what she wants on TV. But when the cheerleaders come on, she turns it, turn that off of there, you sick pervert. Quit looking at that. <laughs> it's all right for her to say, where's my man? If he says, where's my woman? He's a chauvinist. It's all right for her to spend all kinds of money. But you'll criticize. Listen, I got a car sitting out there tonight. Y'all you know, see my car? It's black. It sits right, that, right out there. I have a nice car because I have to drive all the blessed time. I'd rather have a nice car as a nice bed because I travel so much. My car sitting out there tonight is worth about $14,000. 
Aggie has a Toyota that's worth 22000 And she said, I can't believe that pastor rides around in a Lexus. That's Aggie. She's a low-down, long-tongued, backslid woman. Aggie. Don't everybody shout all at the same time. <laughs> I'm not Billy Kelly. Billy Kelly said he preached 50 weeks a year and went bear hunting two weeks and they called him hypocrite. <laughs> That's the way I feel sometimes. I'm going to out here and knock your brains out. I, you know, and I call you a hypocrite if you do one. <laughs> Lord have mercy. That's Aggie. You know what Aggie needs to do? Come and get her heart right, quit running her mouth, and get on the bus route on Saturday. If Aggie would visit regularly, she'd get her heart right. Aggie Tater. Aggie Tater. Amen. She, you can't straighten out the church. You can't straighten out your hair. She puts dumb stuff on her nose book. Aggie, why, why would you put stupid stuff on your nose book? Look, it's bad enough to be stupid, but don't tell the world you're stupid. I mean, I don't know what in the world would possess somebody. To, you, know, you don't put pictures of yourself. We've had people that come to our church put pictures of themselves drinking beer on nose book. Now, you're dumb enough to do it. That's bad. But if you're dumb, you put it on there. You're really bad. I mean, if you, if you do sinful things, that's bad. And you ought to ask God to forgive you. But for heaven's sake, don't tell the blessed world. Amen. Aggie is a, is a mess. She's just a mess. Well, better say another thing or two here before we get done. She's always criticizing other people and never doing nothing herself. And then there's uh, old Uncle Hezzy. And Hezzy is always saying, we can't do it. We can't afford it. We can't make it. I used to love our Sunday school class. Or I, I'd like to see our church move forward. But Hezzy, hesitate. Hesitate means you'll never do nothing. And I've told you before, you'll never do nothing until you go ahead and do it before you're ready. I know people that's always going to do something. Every time you see them, I'm, I'm going to get in there, preacher. I'm going to get in there. I have people to, I'm going to get started in the bus ministry. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I'm going to start tithing. I'm going to do it. Listen, I don't check the records here. I don't, I know preacher, they talked about them this morning, I believe. Uh, they check, I don't check the records here, see who ties and who don't. I mean, surely to the Lord, if you're right with God, you'll, you'll give the money you're supposed to. Surely you will. Surely you will. I just can't imagine that a person would say, I'm right with the Lord and withhold their tithes. I can't imagine that. I, to me, to me, that's the most... I mean, if you're going to steal, for heaven's sake, don't steal from God's house. Don't steal from God's Word. You say, Brother Danny, you just don't understand. I can't afford it. That's probably why you're in the mess you're in. If you would honor God and put God first and put that tithe and that offering in that offering plate, the Lord would help you. Listen, I've been doing it ever since I... I've been saved and God's took care of me. I ain't never done without. And if you'll honor God and believe that book, God will bless you. Surely to the Lord. I trust you. I trust y'all. Surely you ain't just up here singing in the choir and don't even pay your tithes. Surely you don't say amen and, and, and pray and say I'm not with God and don't even pay your tithes. Surely not. Surely not. Well, I just ain't got to the point where I oh, hesitate. 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 Well, I'm about done tonight. I just want to say this thing or two and I'm done. People are watching us. People are, are following us. We're not perfect. I ain't perfect. You ain't neither. But that Tate family will kill any church. Don't hesitate. Don't hesitate to get up on Sunday morning Get your family ready. Get on out here and come to Sunday school. Don't hesitate to be a part. Get in. Get in. Get in. The Lord will bless you for it. 
the Tate family. Lord, they're a mess. They're a mess. I like what Billy Sunday said, and I'm going to tell you this, and I'm through. You've heard me say it before. Heard other preachers say it. He said, I'm going to fight the devil as long as I've got a fist. He said, I'm going to kick him as long as I've got feet. And I'm going to bite him as long as I've got teeth. And when I'm old and without and fistless and footless and toothless, I'm going to gum him till I die. And I go home to heaven, he goes home to hell. Amen. Be in the tape family. Let's stand by our heads for prayer. They're coming tonight.